uh, Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 9, it says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If you flip right over to Philippians here now, and Paul's writing here again, we're going to be looking at uh, Philippians number 1 and verse number 6. And I want you to understand something this morning, that Paul is chained to Roman soldiers at this time that he's writing this. He's not sitting on a beach somewhere out in the sand and having a good time. He is chained to those. He's in prison. He's awaiting trial. And he is writing this to the church at Philippi, and he's saying, in verse number 6 to them and to you today it says that for being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it says here and also and I'm reading it in the Jewish Bible it says I'm sure of this that the one who begun a good work among you will keep it going until it completed on the day of redemption. I want you to know something. A few, few things I want to look at here and then we're going to talk about that your again your destiny is greater than your disaster that you're going through. Paul's in prison. He's chained to these Roman soldiers and he's writing this to the church. But he's writing them to tell them and encourage them just like I encourage you today. And from the word of God that uh, whatever work it is that Jesus Christ has put in you, whatever he has put in you to do, no matter whether it be work or what, but whatever he has designed for you to do, wherever he's designed for you to go, whatever place that he has designed for you to be this morning, it's going to take place this morning because God says it in that uh, verse number six being confident Paul says of this very thing that he which hath begun a work good work in you will rep will complete it now he who, who's he talking about Jesus Christ that put the good work in you he has put the good work in you he has put it on you say to no, a preacher I don't have any work I don't have any good work well the Bible says if you're saved you do have something to do you do have something to do according to the word of God and he has given you things that you may complete this work. Now he's made a way for it and he says that he's going to complete the work that has begun in you. Now you say well uh, I don't know what that is. Well let's, uh, let's look at it this way. Let's not talk about work. That seems to turn people off. See how quiet you got when I talked about the word work. Let's just talk about your destiny whether it be you got to work on your destiny this morning though. I have to throw that in. You have to do something Something to complete and to go your destiny. You have to do something also. Jesus Christ has made the way for you, but uh, you have to do something also. Now, regardless of where you may, what you may be seeing today and how you may feel today and, and uh, uh, how that things may look for you today, I got good news for you. I, you know, some of you look pretty sad this morning, but I got good news for you. Your greatest days are still ahead. Your greatest greatest days are still ahead of you. Now, you say, well, preacher, I'm getting old. Your greatest days are still ahead of you. You're not a finished product yet. You're a miracle in the making is what the Word of God says, and you've not reached your potential yet. So, uh, you know what? As they sung here Wednesday night, I believe it was here, Mike, wasn't it Wednesday night? He's still working on me. I got news for you. That may be a children's song, but he's still working on every one of us. He's still working on our behalf. So uh, your greatest days is ahead and he's going to make those things come to pass. The work God began in you, he will finish it. Now you say, well, he's not going to finish it with me. Well, if he doesn't, he'll, you will wish he had of because if he doesn't finish it with you, he'll finish it with somebody else there and you're going to miss out on that blessing right there. But what God started in you, he will complete. And as I said, you may be in the worst battle you've ever been in and the devil may be attacking you from every corner and everything and he may be afflicting you from every side but I got the still news for you your destiny is still greater than your disaster now you say well preacher you don't know what I'm going through you don't know what sickness I'm facing you don't know what my family life's like you don't know what this and what that 
I don't care what it is, and I don't mean that rudely and, and not in a caring manner. I mean that I don't care what it is because my God is bigger than your problem this morning. My God is able to take care of your problem this morning, and my God is willing and able to help you uh, perform and help you to go to your destiny this morning. A lot of people have just sat back and just absolutely quit doing anything in the, uh, in the work of the Lord and in their life also. A lot of people have absolutely just sat back and just stopped doing anything because of problems or discouragement or somebody said something. Let me tell you something. If I had quit when somebody said something against me or negative to me, I would have been quit a long time ago, Michael, and you would have too. But I'm here to tell you, it don't matter what the devil or what people says. It's what God says this morning. And what God says is in this Word of God, and it's truth this morning, and we need to take it to heart. And we need to take the, the Word of God to heart. As I said to you that Paul was chained to these soldiers, and his outlook didn't look good. But he's still writing something positive. He's still writing that the church of the living God would move on. He's still writing to people that their destiny, that their destiny is greater than their disaster. Keep going forward. Keep marching on is what he was saying in this prayer, in this word right here. So it says here, he's trying to tell them. It says that uh, in, in Acts 2, 23 and 24, and we'll try to give you scripture for everything I've got this morning. And it says, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that they should be holden of him. Peter here is saying it was impossible for death to hold who? Jesus Christ. He didn't have enough enemies. He did. Satan didn't have enough uh, demons. The Roman soldiers wasn't enough. They didn't have enough power and, and all to stop Jesus Christ to be taken to the cross but nevertheless it wasn't taken to the cross if the, what concerns you and I as much as it is that after he was taken to the cross and after he died the third day he arose out of that tomb defeating death hell and the grave and what he did he yanked the keys to the to he yanked the keys to hell out of the hands of Satan and he's in he defeated death hell and the grave for you and I this morning what's that what am I saying and why am I talking that that way I want you to know young folks I want you to know middle-aged folks and old folks this morning that Jesus Christ holds your destiny in his hand he's got the power he overpowered Satan on the cross and he still has the power to overpower Satan he still rules and he still reigns this morning and we act like the devil is in control he's not in control but we live like he's in control we live bound up. You know, a lot of times people say Satan's bound. He's got us bound up. He's defeated us. But I'm going to tell you, he is not going to defeat me because I'm serving a victor. Jesus Christ defeated him at the cross. And Jesus Christ said, because that I am saved by the blood of his there, I am also a victor also. And I am free, and I'm free indeed. Because I'm going to tell you something. Jesus knew that he would be crucified, and he knew after the crucifixion, because he told them, he kept telling and preaching to them and telling them that in three days, he said, they're going to lay uh, this temple down. In three days, I'm going to raise it back up again. They didn't understand what he was talking about, but he kept telling those. He kept telling those men that he knew that the cross was not the end. He knew it was the beginning, folks. And and he knew it was the beginning, not for him. He knew it was the beginning for you this morning. You here at New Beverly Baptist Church. You that have been saved. He know this morning. Today, did you know that today is the, is the first day of the rest of your life? You say, oh, preacher, what do you mean? I've told you before. What has happened in the, back there is the past. You can't bring it back. A lot of people are living back there, but you can't bring it back. 
A lot of people are saying, oh, if this was, I'm going to tell you for 10 years or so, when I first took this church, they'd tell me what the past was of this church and how they used to worship and how many used to be here and what all took place and all. But you know what? I couldn't bring it back. I can't bring it back. But you know what? That's already gone. And whatever's happened in your life, whether it be good or whether it be bad, it is back there and it is gone. You can't bring it back. You need to live for tomorrow. You need to live for the future this morning and your destiny is greater than your disaster. You say, well, I've been hurt, preacher. I've had people tell me all the time. I got hurt in church, preacher, 20 years ago. I just ain't going back. Bless God, go somewhere else because God and Jesus Christ deserves to be worshipped. And I'm going to tell you, my God is bigger than any devil that hurt your feelings 20 years ago. He is bigger than any devil that has cast a, a, a cancer on you or disease on you or has uh, split up your family or has caused problem in your job or whatever the case might be. My God is bigger. And your destiny is not for you to sit around and feel sorry for yourself and sit around and say I don't know what to do I don't know what to do I know what to do this morning give it to Jesus this morning the one that defeated death, hell and the grave the one that defeated Satan give it to him this morning you say I just can't move on I just can't move on with it I know I've got family members that can't move on with it I've got friends that can't move on with it. They're still sitting 10, 15, 20 years ago. They're still sitting there. I told somebody the other day about a family member. I said, he's going to be mad until Jesus Christ comes back. I pray for him, but he's going to be mad. He's mad at everybody. And somebody hurt him. And so we're going to live back in the past. That's all he can talk about. I got to move on. I'm going to tell you, we need to look to Jesus Christ, the one that defeated Satan, and we need to look, at, look for him. I'm going to try to give you some scripture. It says, looking, this is Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Did you understand that this morning? It says right here, the author and the finisher. He's the first and the last, beginning and the end. He's the one that started you. He's the one that will finish you. Amen. You say, well, he's going to go with you. He's going to be with you. But the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy... A joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And I, 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 I was going to move on, but I want you to understand something. For the joy. You say, what do you mean, preacher? The joy that he endured on the cross. I'm going to tell you the joy that you and I might have joy in our heart. That you and I might be saved this morning. That's who he went for. He didn't go for himself. He went for you and I this morning. But he is the author and the finishing of our faith. Again, a setback don't mean it's over. It's posi positioning you for a comeback. You say, well, preacher, I've been set back at work. I, Randall here a few weeks ago, he got a setback. He'd been working for Lowe's, and I did say Lowe's on the TV. He did say Lowe's. Working for 16 years, they walked up and said, we don't need you anymore. We're eliminating your job. That was a setback. But I'm going to tell you something. He's just setting you up for a comeback, son. He's setting you up for a better job. He's setting you up for something better right there. Matthew, you maybe got slapped with the cancer in the face our last week but he's setting you up for a comeback son he's setting you up for a comeback I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is still in charge and we need to serve him worship him and we need to praise him like never before and take his word of God to heart this morning and believe it by faith and expecting a blessing a miracle whatever the case might be that you're going through to, uh, to complete your destiny now, you say, well, uh, uh, well, no, let me just give you, give me, give you a couple of, uh, uh, while I got time here, let me give you a couple of things here. If you look here, you, there, was a, there was a gentleman in the Bible, old Job. When, when I say a setback means uh, uh, positioning you for a comeback, sometimes a door will shut. That means another door is going to open if you're in Jesus Christ. An ending means you're only going to get a new beginning. 
But look at Job. Job 42 says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. He turned him around. When he prayed for his friends, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And it goes on to tell you in, in chapter 42 that he and, and list all those things that he gave him twice as much because he had to go through that, had to endure it. You say, preacher, why did he have to go in through it? I don't know. I don't know. You say, well, preacher, you're supposed to know everything. I don't know everything. I'm just human like you. But I know the Word of God says that he lost everything. But the Word of God also says that God come back and give him twice as much as he ever had. Praise God. I can tell you one thing it doesn't take a real uh, smart person to figure out that God come back and doubled everything he had that his destiny was greater than his disaster that he went through his destiny was greater than that but anyway uh, it goes on down it says God will bring you out of the trial the affliction or setback that you're experiencing because listen God brought Joseph out of a pit Israel out of Egypt Daniel out of the lion's den and the three Hebrew children out of the fire he will bring you out of whatever that you are in this morning because here listen these scriptures I've repeated them a hundred times from this pulpit but Psalms 34 19 says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivereth them out of them how many all of them and also in, in, in Psalms 30 and 5 says weeping in dear for a night but what joy cometh in the morning there, no storm is made to last forever, folks. I'm here to tell you. And, and neither should your trial or affliction or your setback. And then Romans 8, 37 says, Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us us. So folks, listen, if you're on the conqueror, if you're on the winning side, if you're a winner this morning, why are we acting like a bunch of losers this morning? Why are we acting like we have just absolutely cannot move on because we've lost everything we've got? We have lost absolutely nothing. Jesus Christ still loves you. If you're one of his, he still loves you. He still cares for you. And he just says, cast your care upon him because he careth for you this morning. But now, and then another scripture, now thanks be unto God, that's 2 Corinthians 2, 14, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us, us to triumph in Christ. What does that say that causes us to triumph? What does that mean this morning? Triumph means that you will overcome. Triumph means that you are a winner this morning. You say, I don't feel like a winner this morning. I didn't ask you how you felt. You said, it don't look like I'm a winner this morning. I didn't ask you how it looked like. I asked you by faith to trust Jesus Christ that he said that you are a conqueror and that you are a winner and look to him this morning by faith to work it out. Amen. Now, you, uh, in that scripture right there which causes us to trump in Christ, how many things do we conquer? All things. And how often do we conquer it? Your triumph always. So listen, don't tell me that you've got to stay right where you're at. Don't tell me that you've got to stay in the situation that you're in. Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for the good of them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. If you can understand his purpose, the problem wouldn't drive you crazy. If you'll stay true in hard times, God will use the adversity to make advancements. Your disappointments and appointments will become appointments. Your opposition will open doors or opportunity. Again, there's no pit deep enough. There's no far hot enough. There's no storm powerful enough. There's not a change strong enough. Nothing can hold you back. You were created to be a victor in Christ Jesus. You were made to win. Some of you are still looking at me like, you were made to win. Folks, I don't know about you, but I like that. Now, if I was over here trying to pump you up for a UT football game, you'd be on your feet right now. If I told you that we had the winning team, we had the winning combination, we're going to go out there and we're going to win every game, you'd be on your feet jumping for joy. I'm telling you, we're on the winning team this morning. We got the winning combination. We've got Jesus Christ, and he says we are conqueror, more than conqueror. He 
says we are winners this morning. He says there's nothing, nothing that he cannot bring you out of or take you through. But anyway, anyway, it says that there, says that, that uh, uh, let me just, let me just try to read some of these right here. You, you are a son of the most high God. And John 1 and 2, 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You're part of the family of God. You say, what does that mean? Everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to you. That's what that means this morning. Our everything. What Satan sees you at. He sees you as a child of God. He sees what you are about to become and what you are about to do. What Satan sees, see, what say he sees, you see, he sees your destiny. He sees you and he sees your destiny. You say, what does that mean, preacher? Well, if I don't have to read this, I want to, I, I want to tell you this right here. He's not fighting you because of who you are now. Satan is not attacking you because of what you've got now. He's not attacking you because of what you're doing now. He is scared to death that some of you are going to rise up. He is scared to death that some of you are going to rise up and become men and women of God, preachers, teachers, whatever, leaders in the church of the living God. He's scared to death that you're going to do that. So he's going to put as much hell on you now as he can. But I'm here to tell you this morning, no matter what he's put on you, Jesus Christ Christ is still in control. He's still in control of your destiny. And we need to trust God this morning and march on through and pray and by faith hold on this morning. You say, well, preacher, what do you mean? Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you remember when old Moses was down there as a little baby, if you remember Pharaoh had the babies killed. He wasn't scared of the baby. He wasn't scared of Pharaoh when he was a little baby. That wasn't the whole point of it. He was afraid of what Moses was going going to become. He was afraid that he was going to grow up and be a man and become a leader and lead those children of Israel out to the promised land. So he wanted to take him out then. Some of you right now, the devil's trying his best to take you out now and he's doing a pretty good job with some of you. He wants to take you out now before you reach your full potential. He wants to...